Hey guys, welcome to the Massive Iron Channel. I'm Steve Shaw. In this video, we're going to talk about training volume. Is volume, how important is volume for the muscle building process? Before I get into that topic, if you have any questions or comments, drop them down below. The best topic ideas I turn into videos just like this. All right, training volume. How important is it for the muscle building process? We're going to dive into some of the science in this video and try to apply it in a practical, reasonable manner into our lives. Because when it comes to volume and progressing in volume, you, you can add as much volume as you want, but how are you going to fit that into your training week? So we're going to look at volume in terms of uh, practical application. Before we dive into this discussion, we need to establish that volume, volume is not a replacement for hard work and progression. Let me repeat that. Volume is not a replacement for hard work and progression. You just can't go into the gym and just do volume, volume, volume and not focus on hard work and progression. Now, some people will argue my volume training is hard work. My volume training is hard work. Okay, fair enough. I'll give you that one. Perhaps it is, but you still have the progression element. If you are not progressing, if you are not practicing progressive overload, then volume does not matter. That's basically what all the experts agree on, um, what the science is telling us. <clears throat> excuse, excuse me. Your base, your platform is hard work and progression. Without that, nothing else matters, including volume. So we need to establish that. Now, what does hard work mean, all right? What does hard work mean? Well, hard work at its foundation, at its core, is consistency. You can't say you're working hard if you're not working consistent. So 90% of the people out there are struggling with building muscle. 90% of the people, they're not building it as rapidly as they'd like, as, as quickly as they'd like, the quality muscle they want. We have to first start at... Uh, consistency, consistency with effort, consistency actually getting to the gym. If you are not consistent, you're not working hard, okay? So you can't just sporadically go to the gym and then do a lot of volume and say, I'm working hard with volume, why aren't I growing? Because you're not consistent, you're not actually working hard if you're not consistent. Same thing with nutrition. You cannot claim to be working hard if you are not consistent with your diet. This is muscle building. We know the plan. We know the process. We understand that you cannot disassociate. You cannot separate the importance of training and diet. They are synergistic. They work together. And if you are one of these individuals that does not take your nutrition seriously, you are not working hard. No matter how much volume you're doing, sorry, you are not working hard. So, we have established as a baseline that volume is only important if hard work and progression are in the mix. And we have kind of defined hard work a little bit. Now, <clears throat> with all this understood, how important is volume for hypertrophy? Once you have that hard work and progression in the mix, where does it come into play? Well, some of the studies have indicated that you can basically, uh, there's, as far as we know it today, there's no real end limit to how much volume you can add. Uh, basically, you're going to get a little bit return on uh, adding extra volume. How much that volume, that return on investment is, is up for discussion, up for debate. Now, just because I say this doesn't mean you should run out and do a shit ton of volume right now because there are downsides. You can beat the living crap out of your body uh, over the course of five years as a natural or over the course of a lifetime as a natural. It's probably not required because you have natural physiological uh, limits and you're going to probably get there without much volume anyway, without, without much extra volume or an insane focus anyway. You're going to get there with a reasonable amount of volume because uh, that's just the way natural bodybuilding works, natural muscle building works. If you are doing 98% of it right, the other 2%, 3%, the icing on the cake, over the course of four, five, six, seven years, it's not going to matter. You're going to get close to your natural physiological limits anyway without beating the living shit out of your body. So understand that. 
even though when it comes to volume, there is some benefit to adding it over time, adding it over time, we have to understand that it could potentially beat the crap out of our body. And we're probably going to get to our natural limits if we're training hard with progression or close to our natural limits either way, because hard work and progression and having all those other variables in place are far more important than the benefit of volume. So that's just established that. Now, if you are somebody watching saying, hey, I'm curious, maybe uh, maybe I'd like to add a little bit more volume. What you need to understand is that volume is a form of progression. It's a form of progressive overload. It's best when you are starting out of the gate not to do a shit ton of volume, not to do a shit ton of volume. If you're going to add volume, you probably want to add it slowly over time and to a reasonable level where you're not living in the gym and killing your joints and connective tissue. So you want to add it slowly over time. A novice or beginner doesn't need a lot of volume. Once you get in those intermediate stages, maybe you crank it up a little bit. And once you're at that level, closing in on the inner or advanced stages of lifting, then you can fuck around with things and maybe add a little bit more volume. I will say one thing I've always advocated when it comes to volume is considering, considering some form of periodization of volume when you get to the intermediate or beyond stages. If you're going to play around with more volume, then you need to perhaps consider periodizing your training, or doing some form of deload every fourth week. You could also do forms of training when you're in the intermediate or above stages where you're ramping up the volume over time, almost getting to that overreaching stage and then pulling back for a couple weeks. So there, it isn't just a case of rushing into the gym and doing more volume like these knuckleheads on the internet seem to think it is when it comes to volume training. I just went in the gym and I did 40 sets. That's not how it works, bro ski. That's not how it works. We have to do things intelligently so we can be training uh, for years to come and not beat the living crap out of our body. And I want to repeat, just as an end cap, you do not have to be volume obsessed to build a lot of muscle. Let me stress that a lot of muscle. You do not need to be volume obsessed. Use a reasonable amount of volume, maybe a little bit lower when you're starting as a beginner to novice. But as an intermediate, use a reasonable amount of volume, maybe uh, somewhere in 10 to 12. I usually do 12 hard sets, hard sets for major muscle groups and six to nine sets for minor muscle groups a week. And uh, we have to understand when it comes to training hard, which is a a, a base, which is a base of this whole equation, a foundation of this whole equation. If you're training hard, it gets harder to add a lot of additional volume. If you're training harder, it gets hard to go beyond that 12, maybe 15 top working sets for major muscle groups like I do for back. It gets hard to go beyond that because you're absolutely toast when it's done. And that's not a bad thing because you get to that point where you are working hard with that type of uh, with that type of volume. You're going to see quality, quality, quality results, and you probably don't need to add much volume over time, or or um, periodize volume, or cycle volume, or whatever. So just keep that in mind. We have to be reasonable when it comes to volume additions. Okay. Um, just because the research says that there isn't really any stop in, as far as we know it today, any stop in the return on investment in volume doesn't mean that there is benefit in training five hours a day. That's ridiculous because you're going to try to squeeze out maybe an extra half percentage point in gains, uh, from training four or five hours, uh, a week or a day. When in reality, if you just train consistently with a reasonable amount of volume, you're going to get to the same place after three, four, five years. You're going to get to the exact same place. So there you have it. 
Is volume important for hypertrophy? Hard work and progression is really what's important. Volume can be a tool, but it has to be applied wisely. But we need to understand with volume training that over time, if hard work and progression and a reasonable amount of volume are already built into a program, you really don't need to add extra volume. So guys, hope this video has been of some help. If you have any questions or comments, drop them down below. If you made it this far in this video and have yet to subscribe to my channel, please do. I'd appreciate the support. So guys, as always, thanks for watching. Have a great day.